Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we're talking about the new iOS 7. Cool new desk thingy. Although we can't show you a video because we kind of screwed up the first part of this show. Stick with us, it gets better. Awesome Cast, AJ's back. Stay tuned. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. It's the Awesome Cast 189. I'm Mike Sorg here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to get geeky with you guys. Uh, with me on the couch is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. That's me. Flanked by the monkeys. I enjoy the monkeys. Yes. I have a couple monkeys I think I can donate to the monkey cause. <laughs> we will take monkey <laughs> donations to the cause. Of course. Of course we will. Uh, also returning to the show the man I, somewhere in the carolinas at least for the time I'm, being but the I'm, boxes in the background tell you that might not be very long is uh aj i am i am uh i am currently at home in raleigh north carolina it has been a it's been a long time since i've done a podcast at home um, <laughs> and not in a hotel room and not a hotel room uh <laughs> no i i am moving that's what those boxes are for. They're not for unpacking. They're for packing. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of my stuff that's over here and over there is going to go in those boxes. And then I'm moving. Awesome. Does the one box say this box? There's like a box in the background that says Some, this box. It says something it's, this oh, box. It's reuse this box. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, just, I, I thought it was this box as opposed to that it's box. It's a very <laughs> self-aware moving system. <laughs> yep. No, you when you buy boxes at U-Haul, they actually have really nice boxes. So if you're ever moving, and I've moved a whole bunch, uh, if you're ever moving, go buy boxes at U-Haul because they have really, really nice ones. And uh, they are reusable. I think I've had these ones for three or four moves now. Nice. And they're still in pretty good shape. So Never get rid of them. Awesome. And, of course, this is yeah, Awesome Cast where we get geeky, we get nerdy. Uh, here uh, we, have, of course, are at awesomecast.com uh, where you can go there on Tuesday nights around 6.30 p.m. Eastern for a nice link so you can join us in the chat room and join us live and uh, let us know what you think about some of the geeky things going on out there. Um, and, of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Awesome Cast. Uh, awesome Cast on your Facebook, on your Google+, Plus, or drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Com. And you can also find us audio and video versions on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker uh, so far. Uh, with more on the way, I do believe. Hey, just a little uh, line there. I do believe if anybody happens to pick us up on uh, iTunes in the video form, uh, that will not be available too much longer. Uh, so you might have to move over to YouTube or uh, Blip TV or something for that. Right. Uh, Blip TV is pulling our support for iTunes. That's sad. So I need to find somewhere else to put video, but I figure I, how many people are iTunesing video? It I don't know. I, I it feels like they're gonna get their video from there. Was it an MP4 format anywhere? <sighs> what do you mean? Well, because you could just update your feed. Do you have an RSS feed? Yeah, I, I can put it somewhere else, but I where else would and I? And then put point it? iTunes to it. Yeah, I guess so, but well, I, I guess I could pod press it or something, mm. maybe, and just serve it all myself. I, I did it old school when when I was doing some stuff. I actually manually edited an RSS <laughs> feed. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not up for doing that. Not that, no, no. No, Sorg's got better things to do. Sorg is a fancy man. He's got things to do. Yeah, and <laughs> manually editing RSS, RSS feeds, feeds is are not on, not that list of on my to list do. of things I would like to be. Managing on a regular um, basis like right feeds now. Down, feeds down, feeds down. What's that? No, you're around. Bro- you're around. No, broadcast is down. Broadcast is down. That's weird. Yeah. Well, we're still and you're still coming back. back. He's so, so we'll just roll with it. AJ we'll slowing down. Uh, and we'll work on that feed thing and see what's going on there. Um, but anyways, uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Uh, Chilla, uh, what do you have on hand here? So I actually posted... Uh, what is it called? The Slate Pro? Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Slate Pro Desk, which I'm a, I love like nice desks and backpacks. Mm -hmm. And this is a desk that someone created that's extremely overpriced. But I think I'm actually going to try to make this desk. Okay. Because it doesn't look like it's the the acrylic top is going to be the hardest part. But what they did was they took all these little areas on the desk where you can it's like a 
automatic dock for up to two phones, a tablet. There's a bunch of holes drilled in the center of it where you can run all kinds of wiring up through. There's two holes in the back for wiring. They have these sections where you can just drop in pegs to kind of organize your mail. They have a little uh, pencil tray. There's a little area for your, your mug of coffee or your drink of choice. I, I don't. It, it just looks really nice, and it looks... It looks like something that I would like as far as what I would like to have in my office and just be make it kind of like nice, clean. Everything's propped up. It's pretty. Um, it's not it's not ginormous. Mm-hmm. So I think so, this would this would force me to not have the mess that is my desk right here. Right in front of me. I just see crap everywhere. And I have that if problem, like, too. If I knew that there's this was my spot for things, I would probably put things there. I, I've been raised I, – I don't know if I was raised to always put things in the proper place. But if there was like a spot – like this is my spot for my coffee. I would put my coffee there. And then I was, this is the spot for my mouse. And this is where my mouse goes. Like that's probably what I would do. This, this thing would force me to be more uh, – although I would be really mad if I were working on something. Mm-hmm. And uh, like on my desk proper and I dropped something and it fell through one of those giant holes. Well, and that's why I think I, I I don't want as many holes in that center section. Like I was saying, to to make this, it's not it's not that hard. And actually, I was I was fortunate enough. My grandfather moved out of his house, so I have a lot of woodworking tools now. So I could probably I could probably do some routing and stuff to get those indentations going. Well, it it, it, it just, looks like the like it's it's a wood table, and then they've drilled this they've cut the same holes on a piece of acrylic that goes on top correct mm-hmm. yeah i would just leave it as the bare wood I think that's wood that's would. what i think i'm gonna do i don't i, I don't see leave. a need for the acrylic the acrylic would just allow you to keep the wood in really great shape but i think part of the the part of the magic of wood as a as a material is the fact that once it starts to start to rub like your hands i know that right here on my on my table under my mouse and I don't even have like a really fancy desk. This is from Ikea. Um, it's got like a really nice pattern for where my mouse has effectively rubbed away the top layer. Um, I think wood would be, it would look really nice and it would start to like kind of, I don't know. Show a little stress. It would, get a little, it would soften up. Mm-hmm. So like all of the really hard cuts that you have would eventually kind of wear down and they'd get like kind of, you ever see an old like an old wooden desk and everything just all of the cuts that used to look look like they used to be really really sharp have now just kind of worn away and they've now gotten all soft mm-hmm. I think that'd be, mm-hmm. that'd be awesome awesome I, I think it's overpriced i think it's like the kickstarter is like 498 dollars, and that's to get you in the second run of yep. the desk they're also working on a lap version of this which i thought's a pretty neat concept this isn't to me isn't a 500 hundred dollar item this is like a fifty dollar if you're if you're going expensive piece of wood so yeah i think i'm gonna try to try to build it kind of for myself and tailor it to myself probably have i may actually put like because i have a whole slew of tablets i may make like an arc for the tablet area where i can put a bunch of tablets there and then and then go from there so I, I thought it was kind of, pretty darn cool. Uh, it would be kind of cool if the arc that you have had like some sort of gesture tracking system. You could like wave your hand and make it do things. That would be neat. Be kind of cool. Awesome. But as a, as a real quick aside, though, mm-hmm. my my runner up awesome thing. I got a random call from AT and T, and they said, you know, it's snowing and the weather's crappy, so we're not getting a lot of customers in the store. Um, and and the guy actually worked at the the store that was downtown where where i i walk over every once in a while and that's where i got my iphone and he said i just want to make you aware that if you're willing to give us your and this started to kind of freak me out other than the guy had an accent and i know who was on the other line because i talk to him all the time when i go into the at&t store okay so it was the store itself it's the store itself okay so if you're willing to give me your driver's license number to validate who you are we will change your plan without extending your contract. We will take $20 a month off of your bill. We will up your data plan from 4 to 10 gig. 
and you can have a nice day. What? <laughs> what the hell? Like, can I are you, that are you, are are you, can you call him back? I'll give him my driver's license number. I'll get that too. So then, but what conference was it where the the CEO of T-Mobile was up on the up on stage and and completely bashed AT and T? It was right when they came out with their "We'll we'll buy out your contract." I think it was just like a random T-Mobile. It might have been CES. Was it? CES? It was CES. It was mm-hmm. CES where. They wouldn't even let the the T-Mobile CEO into AT and T's like, party that. that evening. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're back oh, on. Yeah, I got dude. video back on. I Woo-hoo! don't think we're gonna have video for that first part. We might actually be online. We have no idea what's going on. The internet has like completely credit out on us. Uh, Wirecast <coughs> wouldn't connect. Yeah, we were still on Hangout. Something really weird is going on. We've restarted our our router and everything i think we're live live again uh so but we will have you guys audio you're not even gonna notice you're not even gonna notice the rest of you guys on audio video is getting all sorts of uh, audio is getting easter eggs yeah, yes they are <laughs> this is for me the audio listener this is for me to you the audio listening audience if yeah. you're an audio listener like me and you never get to see the video this is for you <laughs> that means we can't show the desk like we were. I don't know. Maybe I can recover the file. It's Who knows? Okay. It's I don't okay. know. If anybody knows how to recover Wirecast files, I found one place, but it takes two days and about 150 bucks. So that's a problem. Um, yeah. So anyways, uh, 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 talked about the desk and everything. AJ, I'll get you a feed here coming out. Um, no, don't worry about it. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. You know, actually, I had just um, gone through Chilla. I think a couple of you guys res- may have responded on uh, Twitter because I was debating between we had two unlimited plans, grandfathered in on AT and T, and there's that. And I looked at we have five lo- five lines. If I went with their ten gigabyte plan, it was like a hundred dollars cheaper. When plus, I, yeah. you get hotspot. Plus all this other stuff. And I was like, ah, you know, why not? Yeah. Then, so that's when you start taking a look at that data plan. You start looking at how much data you're really using. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, and are you under 10 gig? Uh, we are between the two of us. We're under six, around six. And you're good to go. She. Well, the the good biggest thing is, is she does like Pandora all day when she's at work. So? Like that's the biggest thing. She was do, like she was pulling four gigs. I pull about three. We have uh, three. 250 or 300 megabyte plans we have the parents on so we're like please don't use your data or it'll be really expensive um <laughs> that's that's adorable i know right but now it's like eight, hey guys I you can use this a month by myself <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um but we weren't using anything extensive with 10 gigabytes i think it's going to be fine I, I was like you know don't start watching netflix on this thing um it made it too cost prohibitive to still have the unlimited plans with our situation if i'm one person with one line that's different so, so I think I think this is where you're going to get caught in the catch twenty two. Mm. So, part of the trick to this, and and reading the fine print, it's still cheaper in the long run, and with the new plan structure. But the new plan structure is based on the fact that you have a phone off contract, so you're not getting yeah. dinged for like the you pay, you got a subsidized phone and you're in the now unsubsidized pricing but you're still paying full contract price yep. if you read how this actually works so so you so an iphone costs what 629 yeah. 629 yeah. for the phone it costs 650 dollars. none of your fancy bank pricing sir. okay sorry 650 50 dollars you pay 200 at the store mm-hmm. your contract a portion of that contract goes to pay for the remainder of that amount through the time of your contract, which is why contracts two years. Okay. Hey, can I can I sidetrack here? Sure. Chill is about to tell you guys why the edge plans are uh, before Verizon and AT and T uh, cut back on their subsidy or cut back their actual plan pricing. He's gonna he's about to tell you why all those plans were really really down if you were in the continue. So, <laughs> so what would happen is you hit your two year mark. And you're still that that chunk of money that's going to pay off the phone that you got at the subsidized price is now going directly into AT and T's pocket. So what they said is, you know what, we're going to get rid of the potential for a subsidy price, and what we'll do is we will bill you a monthly rate on top of what you're paying to pay the subsidy off. So if you take the phone past two years, you end up getting a discount, but if you're willing to turn the phone in, I think it's every year for AT and T. It may even be every six months. If you're willing to actually give you the phone back, we'll give you the next newest phone that you want immediately, 
you just keep paying the subsidy price. Mm -hmm. Where I think that where AT and T is going to really try to to mess with their customers, I think this is good for the majority. The people I think it's not going to be good for is I don't think the people that are on grandfathered unlimited plans are going to be allowed to get a subsidized priced phone. Oh, oh wow! And, the, and this is this is for this is AT and T and Verizon. And eventually, no, no, not Sprint because they still have their unlimited plans. But this is Verizon and AT&T finally cleaning out all the people who have just held on year by year to their grandfather unlimited plans because they don't want to give them up, even though they're really five gig plans and you're all lying to yourselves. Um, <laughs> so dumb. I, I, I switched, when I switched from AT&T to Verizon, I lost my unlimited plan with AT&T. I don't think I've ever gone over. Um... And uh, then I switched back to AT&T, and I think I went over one month. And it's like an extra gig is $10. It's not like they're charging you by the kilobyte anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For a whole gig. Like, that's why I like when I'm like, I'm close and I'm like about to go over, I just go, whatever. It's ten dollars. Like I'm not going to worry about. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Crap, I and and, like, and, hey, and I can imagine eight thousand dollars for it. Like I've been getting not and they're pretty good about notifications on AT and T too, because I've been getting them for like my our parents that have mm -hmm. been getting really close to that two hundred fifty megabyte spot, you know, um, to keep an eye on that. So, you know, as long as I can keep an eye on it, and 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 and. It's fine. Now I don't have to worry about minutes. I don't have to worry about texts, which was another thirty dollars I was spending on oh, top wow. of everything else because you had to pay yep. extra for the unlimited texts. Yeah. So, so you were paying like however much for the well, you were paying probably how many minutes did you have? I don't know, like seven hundred and fifty plus. I don't know, ungodly right, so you, amount of rollovers. All right, so you had seven fifty. I think that was the seventy dollar plan plus. 10 a line and you had five lines yeah five lines so you, two unlimited plans so that, and okay so that's all right three so various on, depending on um, my bill was like around 270 dollars. so you're going to yeah, drop to like 110 plus two, uh, plus 230 dollar plan so that's 170 yeah plus the unlimited texting for all five lines i'd imagine right yeah so you're at another that's another 20 that's a, yeah there you go there's your 270 yeah yeah yeah. So it just did it. it just didn't work for that anymore. And plus now I can hotspot, you know, which makes it easier to use, you know, this Google Glass now with just my phone, which makes me kind of irked that I have a Verizon plan for the next year and a half. Um that I but I still kinda like it for the backup. But still it's yeah. like just doesn't seem like or if there's something that comes up that I need it, but I don't need it as often as I thought I was going to. Yeah, now I just do. download apps like app updates. Sure, update over. I LTE. want doing the updates. <laughs> the Wi-Fi sucks at my Monday job, so I pulled on the uh, I turned on the Verizon LTE because I'm like I barely use this four gigabytes this month and probably won't. And just went ahead and downloaded the uh, the iOS update right off of that. It's LTE. I was like, you know what? This is quicker than the Wi-Fi here. This is ridiculous. So that's a, yeah, that still blows uh, my mind when you're like, I, I had a coffee shop. And I just turn on my LTE because I can't stand how slow the coffee shop Wi-Fi is. <laughs> oh, I, I do it at hotels. I do it oh, at yeah. customer sites. I do it all the time. The whole ability to just oh, pull out my phone. And you know what I do? I don't even do the Wi-Fi hotspot. I plug it into my laptop with a USB cable. Mm -hmm. So I get I get to charge my phone and I get the internet. I don't understand why that's a problem. <laughs> wow. And I, I mean, I have a hard time. I have a hard time hitting... I think I've maxed out at like seven gig. Oh, wow. I've t I've touched ten a couple times. Have you? See, I yeah. had uh, uh, Frank that's been on here, Fuzzy, uh, Fuzzwad. He was saying that his kit's like fifteen to twenty, so he needs to hold on to his unlimited plan. <laughs> it's like okay, man. <laughs> I'm not in that, if I was in that situation, well, I knew a guy on Sprint. I knew a guy on Sprint that was hitting seventeen to eighteen. That's gig crazy. Months. Now here's oh, something that completely blows my mind. So we, we get our, our reporting for where I work on our on our MiFi hotspots and, and we have a we have a pooled plan. So it's it's three gig per device pulled. Okay. Thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> because there's some devices that, you know, they're they're like disaster recovery, they're only gonna get turned on in an emergency. Yeah. There's there's like a handful of devices that are breaching the two hundred gig. 
My God, mark. they just live on that thing, on a, don't on they? a month. <laughs> they on just month. live on. I'm that guessing thing. they're running their entire house <laughs> off of like their kids are just you know what? And, that, and that's another. Seven. Th- 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 we're off shooting all this stuff. Sorry, but we're, we're so. <laughs> but no, no, no. But there's this other discussion. Um, I, I listened to Corn Cord Killers, which used to be Frame Rate, which is all about like you know cutting a cord over the mm-hmm. top TV for the most part. Um, and they're talking about like, well, why don't you cut the other cord too? Because Wi-Fi or LTE on this stuff is so fast. You could run all your stuff and watch stuff either than, other than it being cost prohibitive, I right. think. Yeah, you could. If you had yeah. an unmetered plan LTE through something, you could really just kind of live off that. I can just, I just set my jet Verizon jet pack up uh somewhere and watch everything off of that sometimes it's faster or I mean, if you get... i mean i mean god when we were having problems here earlier in this show sorry video people in the first half um that that you know we could i was like well maybe i just hook all this thing up to the jet pack and go or you know i mean if you go go swap out um, I, and i know you probably use that lte hotspot in other places mm-hmm. but as a fallback if you get good sprint coverage here just go get an unlimited sprint Just LTE. Just go get an unlimited sprint LTE that's true. hotspot. That's like that's like your your like zombie emergency uh, backup uh, internet plan. <laughs> I guess. Would that be? Now you've got me. No, oh, you've got me thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. How much would that be? <laughs> uh, new customer. <laughs> <laughs> all right report back to us on that i got one it's phone related um this could be an awesome thing it's a new thing I, i've only got to poke around in it a little bit um you guys know we talked about it Dutters is on it too marvel unlimited um a great all you can eat plan and paying 10 bucks a month to you know it's probably like six month old comics and back way back it was great to like read one comic and and they were actually talking back to when jubilee was introduced in the x-men and it'll have that has a little thing there which doesn't happen often anymore when they do the reference backs um but i could go check out that issue that i never read of x-men where they actually introduced jubilee which was weird because i didn't realize the first issue episode of the x-men cartoon was kind of uh, a take on that anyway they find her at like a mall yeah at a mall and everything i didn't yeah. know that was her actual origin was they mm-hmm. found her at a mall which was really confusing because they were in australia at the time what, Anyways. they don't have malls in Australia? No, they were in the Hollywood Mall. Oh. But they had a mutant that would transport them anywhere in the world, yet they still decided to live in Australia. I don't completely understand that. I didn't get to that point when I was reading back issues. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, hey, look, I got a product cam over here. It's not very good, but it's here. Uh, but I'll give you an idea. Uh, so so this is on iOS only, and which is unfortunate since I mostly read on the Android device right now. But I'm kind of getting back in the iPad side, not that I can update my iPad. Um, but it, they added a motion comments kind of thing. And you can actually go in, and I pulled up a couple examples. Um, a lot of Captain America and Avengers stuff they have in here. So what they've added is um, a little bit of... Uh, multimedia to the comics and in in this um captain america number eight from 2004 it looks like if you go in and read it one it's nice it'll actually give you a loading screen um it didn't before it's just white on your video but it you just kind of like waited around and hope the comic loaded you had no idea if it was hung up or what especially on uh, some of the older devices so we'll give that a second there should have prepped this um and then it'll give you an option to download all the audio and click that too so you don't have to do this if there's a comic um you know that gives you the option and obviously i don't think they're going to do this on everything i don't know what they've determined if they did this in the past for motion comics or something but now if i turn audio on i can start reading this comic and they also updated the smart panels which if you're familiar with uh comiXology um and i don't know why the audio isn't kicking in here If you're, if you're familiar with Comixology, like, it's pretty good how it, like, actually moves panel to panel. It was not like this in previous versions of this. Um, so it, it's, it it's makes it a little more readable on the smaller iPhone screen. Um, and actually, it's there was there were certain instances where it would cut off weird and i wouldn't actually be able to read all the speech bubbles and i don't know why it's not doing this but you'll have background music if you hear like a clang of the shield like you'll actually hear a clang when you go to the mm-hmm. panel um 
and, and as we go page to page, it will actually change the mood music and everything. So I don't know why it's kicking in here. But the other thing they have is, if you read recent uh, Marvel comics, Check there's... vibrate function. I, I turned it off. That's what I don't understand. Maybe turn it off and back on. But I don't I know. Maybe something that else loaded. It maybe it's the iOS update. But if you do a comic, uh, if, you, if you have the physical comic and you see the little AR logo, there's a uh, Marvel AR app you could pull up on your phone and pull it up and it'll, it'll bring in some multimedia elements uh, connected to the comic. Uh, I've always found these when I was going through Marvel Unlimited, but and I tried like grabbing another device, pulling up the AR app and trying to take a picture of it. It never worked for me, right? Now, uh, here I got an ep uh, issue of Avengers number one from uh, 2012 and right there and now if it has that kind of ar content as it loads it'll actually show you all the videos connected with that some of them will be uh flashback scenes which really look like kind of multimedia retellings you see a little video thing pops up at the bottom of the page so i'll hit the video and there's all the videos attached some of it is a uh, kind of making of stuff some of it is kind of motion comic-y flashback stuff and there's actually multimedia content that they've made for this specific issue so, and Marvel's been really big. So actually stuff from like the artists about conception and everything of the stuff. So I was tennis stuff, I've a tennis stuff at Comic Cons where Marvel is really big about, we want to do these motion comics. We're trying to find new ways for people to get into comics um, through varying successes over the years. Like we've all seen those kind of Marvel night series motion comic-y uh, uh, or just take the art and make them move. Um, so it, it's kind of nice. I can't imagine always using that audio. Like, like I can't, I can't imagine a regular basis where I want a comic with music to it, you know, uh, but it's an interesting kind of uh, aspect that they're kind of trying here. So. I think they're doing it because of the movies. I mean, they, you know, people have now gotten used to hearing and, and, watching these stories from the comics play out with all of the ambiance of an actual movie mm -hmm. uh, that when they go to read the comics, they're like, this is not as awesome. Whereas yeah. comics are awesome, but they just don't have music. So this is now Marvel trying to bridge the gap a little bit. They want to do, they want to make it more appealing than just like this printed piece of paper, I think. And right. they've been trying that for a long time. I think what's happened though is actually with digital comics with uh comiXology and now the unlimited app i think that's really opened it up because now i don't have to go into a coffee or not a coffee shop but a comics book shop um and deal with that or find them because my always thing my always problem was my problem was always uh finding the comics like you i would have to go to a mall that was like you know 15 miles away and hopefully they would carry the book that I wanted at the, at the uh, Walden books, right? Oh um, my God, Walden books. <laughs> yeah, Walden books was my source. Before you that... Just, you, just, you just hit my soul. I mean, we're talking about, like, my first introduction to comics, well, my first, but my first introduction to, like, superhero comics and getting those on a regular basis, not the old, like, uh, Star, He-Man, and other cartoons comics that I got when I was a younger kid. Um, that's a whole other discussion. Um, did you know Popples had a comic book? Anyways, uh, but I got the four books that they had at my grocery store, which was like yes. Uncanny X-Men, one of the Superman books, Detective Comics, and Amazing Spider-Man, and that was it, right? You, you, were, you have just tapped into what I loved about going to the grocery store on Sunday morning. Exactly. <laughs> um, my dad would just let me go. He wouldn't even stop me. He would just say, all right, I know where you're going. Yeah. And I would just run immediately to like the periodical section. Mm-hmm. And they would have all the magazines and everything like that, but then they had this one like round circle thing of comic books. Ah, I didn't even have that, and, man. I had four books. There, were, I had a choice of four books. Shout out to Greenville, PA. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Greenville, PA? The Bilo, not even there anymore, man. Not oh, even man. there. R.I.P. Um, I was also stuck with a side note: the, the WWF. I never got WWF magazine from there, but they would have the programs for like the Royal Rumble. And that, that was hurts. it. That hurts. That hurts That's a lot. Crazy. That hurts a whole lot. Um, but now, like, you don't have those situations anymore. Or even, like, you know, I'm, if you don't see yourself as being a geek that goes into Midtown Comics, if you live in New York, New York City, 
You know, uh, it, it's now accessible. I don't have to like, I have to make a trip to go get these books. You can go buy them or get a Netflix of comic books plan, like with this uh, Marvel Unlimited. I think that has been their digital play. And I and they were so iffy on it. Because I remember them talking about digital comics. And at the time, they didn't have day and date releases on any of this stuff. Marv, or DC actually jumped head first into it with the new 52 they said all this stuff's going to be day and date from now on um and i think they pretty much stuck to that marvel i think is for the most part in the same situation all the indies are in there uh by now too um and i think you know other than adding this all this multimedia stuff i think just the availability and having it on so many devices and not just paper um i think that's been the real kind of savior of them as far as getting it out there um, than these goofy, it does just come off goofy when they have this stuff. The, the video stuff is kind of okay, but I haven't seen it on a comic that I actually read, you know? Uh, let me know when it's attached to the Superior Spider-Man comics. Actually, maybe I should look back and see if there's some attached to them. I don't know if this is going to be retroactive on anything they can attach it to or what, if it's future issues coming out. Um, but a pretty good play by Marvel, and I'll be keeping an eye on it. So hopefully that Android gets updated well, soon, too. Let me ask you the same question that... Uh people get asked about ebooks paper comics or e-comics what do you think uh not really a preference yeah. i just want to read and if it means i don't if i can just sit there on a device and plow through a bunch of comics like i want to binge on comics and that's a very expensive proposition if you're going with paper or because uh, i do i do still get um because i don't have anything equivalent on dc so i actually get all the trade paperbacks from the library oh that's right and i think that's about that when i'm like you know that experience versus you know just having it on my my tablet um i think in some cases it enhances it just because of art i know uh, I, I picked up a few issues I actually did buy a couple issues of gates of gotham digitally and i remember them talking about it i went to look for it they actually specifically drew things in a greater detail because you could zoom in and in case gotham was about um some very like the history of gotham city the like untold history of gotham city and they talked about there's a lot of architecture in it so there's a lot of these little like details in there that kind of cross the story and everything things you can't do on paper and print because of the resolution um you know and that idea that there's some comics that they make with digital in mind first. Some are digital exclusive, and they tailor the art towards it. So it's kind of adapting to that medium. I don't think print will go away anytime soon. You're going to have your diehards for that. But I think it's it's still going to open up. I think you're going to get less print in the long yeah. run. Um, and I think they've admitted they're like you're never going to get rid of print. It's still going to be the highest percentage. It still is the highest percentage of the sales. But now there's this whole, you know, hopefully extra line of people. I mean, they got me paying ten bucks a month to Marvel that I wasn't before, you know. Yeah. And that's just their back catalog. Does this does this sound familiar? Oh yeah. Does this sound did, familiar? AJ, did I tell you what I did when uh, when when they announced the pay per view list for WWE Network? No. I have all the VHSs from the pay-per-views we ever bought yeah, uh, and dubbed on a tape. And I'm just like, well, these can go. Yeah. You just <laughs> saved a bunch of space in your house. Just saved a bunch of space in my house. I'll maybe try to sell them for a buck a piece at the, at the wrestling shows or something. And I dubbed goodbye. Survivor Series 94 on here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, AJ, have we even touched on yours yet? No. I have two awesome things. Okay. One shameless plug, uh, my company is doing a conference. So if you're listening to the sound of my voice and you are in the Carolinas and you deal with virtualization, servers, networks, storage, backups, recovery, if you do IT stuff, come to Vero Madness, madness.vero.com. Go to that website, register, use my name. It's right here. And uh, I went backwards. Um, you should uh, You should come. It's going to be awesome. We have a, a big star-studded lineup of people uh, in our industry that talk about the stuff on a fairly regular basis, and they're very, very smart people. We have a genius bar. We have uh, basketball hoops because it's the whole reason is it's the first day of the tournament, uh, of the NCAA tournament, so it's a chance for you to get out of your office and uh, come hang out with us and talk about fun, cool stuff instead of filling out timesheets. 
<laughs> just throwing that out there. March 20th, the Westin, Charlotte, North Carolina. You should come be there and hang out with us. Now, uh, one of the people who's one of the companies that is coming to Vero Madness, see how I tie it all together, uh, is my cool thing of the week. Uh, it is called Nutanix. Uh, so if you deal with virtualization and storage and networking, you realize there's a lot of hardware involved. There's a lot of stuff. Um, and Nutanix is a new player to the, to the block. Um, what they've done is they've put the storage inside the actual hardware itself and use software to present that storage to all of the hosts in the cluster. And it's this really, really cool technology to you. So it's only this big. So to you is four inches. It's uh, to you high and uh, has four servers in it and can run a whole mess of, of virtual machines. Uh, scales out really, really well. Uh, I actually got to walk through and install this on Friday, uh, and I can't get over how awesome it is. It went from out of the box, into the rack, powered on, set up, ready to go in an hour and a half. And I went, well, that's a bit faster than anything I've ever dealt with in my life. <laughs> um, so Sorg is playing the, the nice video from Nutanix and showing the old monolithic array style of things. And now all of the storage comes out, goes directly to the host. They share all of it. And then you don't have to worry about having this lone array that actually presents all your storage. So um, if you know what I'm talking about, you should come to Veromatis to talk more with them about it. And then I can come see you and I can help you install it and talk about some other stuff. Thumbs up. Awesome. We got some news from uh, some local community friends. We've actually talked with a lot of companies that have come from this. But uh, TechCrunch uh, actually has yes. a list of the 15 best accelerators in the U.S. And mm. check out who's number six. This is a name that's brought, come up a lot here. Alpha Lab. Hey, from Alpha here Lab. in Pittsburgh. What's up, Alpha Lab? Um, uh, cool. They've had a few companies that have kind of become a big deal. Resumator, uh, they got purchased by somebody, I think. Um, for one, they, uh, we've had open, not open table. Um, geez. No wait. No wait. Thank you. Oh, my God. Uh, they've been on the show, uh, I think, maybe even a couple times. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of friends of the show have been through it. Um, it it's it's kind of nice to see a Pittsburgh company represented on this list. Yeah, because the rest of them are in LA and San Francisco. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> uh, and, and, and not even like, there's not even like a, I don't think they even have a CMU, um, any of their venture places. But I guess that's kind of a different thing because they're probably funded by CMU. Of course, it's probably a different category entirely. Um, Is but this in the show notes? No, not necessarily. Yeah, it's in the, the TechCrunch uh, link halfway down. Um, you also see a lot of crossover. Like I know when I visited, I, what was it? I think it was called a project Olympus. I think was their uh, incubator over there that I visited one time. And I saw a few companies that actually had been in alpha lab for a minute. Um, so, you know, there, there is that crossover too. Um, but no, it, good, good to see like there is a source in Pittsburgh. There is a lot happening. I mean, that's kind of one of the basis of the start of the show was, hey, look at all this technology that's happening here uh, in the middle of the country um, versus you don't have to go to a left or right coast in order to do this kind of stuff. Um, and a few companies doing very, very well from this. So um, good stuff. Uh, what was another one? Uh, what's uh, All of them are blanking on me. Like half of them have been sponsors of PodCamp. What's the one mob? Uh, mod cloth. Mod cloth. There you go. That was one. But oh, they were an alpha lab. I thought they were an alpha lab. I know. I don't think they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, if you go to the TechCrunch page mm -hmm. and you click on Alpha Lab, uh, you can see all of the companies that they've invested in in the last like year, almost two years now. Nice. Um, so you can kind of see where things are going. Uh, I'm really interested in uh, NetBees. Uh, for what I do on a day-to-day -day basis where uh, it appears, and I, there's not too many, it's not too deep in terms of the uh, uh, data on that on that project, but um, NetBees has a, uh, a product that looks like it plugs into your network and does end-user network monitoring and that sort of stuff, which is nice. pretty cool. Um, innovation works. Well, it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I'm just reading things. Innovation out loud at this works. Point. It, it, Alpha Lab actually, I think, is a project of 
Innovation Works, which is like a VC kind of thing, I think. Um, but what's nice about them is uh, when they go through Alpha Lab, uh, there is a thing that once they've invested in them, like they need to stay here in Pittsburgh, or at least have a part of them in Pittsburgh. Um, so they're not getting all the good stuff out of there and then taking off to LA or anything too. So, um, so I think that's kind of nice. Uh, the kind of keep... weather is very nice there. <laughs> yeah. And the weather is <laughs> exactly. Um, so hey, good, good to see that. Good to see uh, Pittsburgh getting a little bit of recognition there on a national scale. Um, and I don't think, have we touched, we have not touched on, uh, iOS got updated. No. Um, iOS 7 one. I've noticed the buttons, uh, AJ, you pointed out the button size or maybe somebody else did. I, I did. Cause, and this is me being a real dork um, because I use my phone as a phone. <laughs> a novel idea. It can, um, it can make I, phone no, calls? I, I use hundreds upon hundreds of minutes a month because I'm in my car all the time and it's very unsafe to text and tweet and such while driving. Um, so Sorg's going to shut his phone off. I'm showing you, man. <laughs> the buttons. The, the, um, no, the big one for me is the, 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 the start and end call buttons. Um, just because they made them really small, there used to be a nice bar that went across the whole yeah, screen. Yeah. It's very difficult to miss that. Now it's a really tiny button. And it's pretty easy to see miss this. That. There you go. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's a, that lone single button. Instead of it being a whole bar that used to go across your screen, mm -hmm. it's now just that tiny. You know, the weird button, is when is... I when I loaded it, it actually showed like the full button for a moment, and then went to the small yeah. one. Like I don't know if it's like refreshing it because it hasn't loaded or something. Um, I was like, oh, I'm going away now. Bye. A good discussion yeah, though that it's it's like but it's also the shape of your finger pressing it right i mean it matches all the other buttons it's the shape of your finger pressing it but man it was like when i'm in my car i don't want to have to look <laughs> like i know where it is on the screen just doing this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah uh, carplay is involved uh so carplay is now ios in the car it's now uh changed into carplay which matches the terminology for airplay uh, which allows you to do it takes basically it takes the stuff that's on your phone so maps messages uh, siri uh, music and additional apps that have been custom that have been updated to work with carplay um, now have a safe interface for a touch screen that is in your car um, i am a huge fan of this as somebody who spends a lot of time in cars Although I will likely never ever see it, um, <laughs> because it involves right now the only three the only three makers of cars that make it are Volvo, Ferrari, and Mercedes. It's coming to Honda and Chevrolet and a number of other makers, but I don't plan on buying a new car anytime soon, so I probably won't see it unless somebody like a pioneer makes an aftermarket version. When it, and I think was it Mercedes was already saying they're going to put in aftermarket panels. That they'll have for sale i can't it was one of the car vendors the other interesting thing i was reading the more and more i read about this after last week we were talking about how carplay actually runs on cunix which is blackberries it's, go ahead yeah but it, it it runs on cunix in certain vehicles right so that's where i'm wondering if like some software updates will bring this into the car i think there's some there's something that needs to be there I agree. But There's I, don't, some... I don't think it needs to. I think Apple has. I think Apple was trying to, let's say, force the issue and yeah. say that certain things needed to be in place. And the car maker said, uh, no, but we still want you. How do we make that happen? And Apple yeah. eventually relented and said, all right, here are the things that you need to do. But one of the keys, I think, to this, yeah. this technology is all the processing takes place back on the phone. Yep. So... Pretty much your air displaying yep. content off of the phone. It, it's yeah. all going to rely back on the phone. So that's where that's, I'm – go ahead. That's the whole point of CarPlay was that it, the whole idea of CarPlay is that the GPS and head units in cars are generally pretty stupid. And any time that you want to update them, it is, a, it is a very large ordeal. In fact, if I remember correctly, who was it? I think somebody said they had a Nissan Maxima. A customer line. So they had a Nissan Maxima and they wanted to update the maps in it. It was going to cost $400 to do it because it cost $200 for the maps and then it cost $200 to take the passenger seat out to get to the hard drive in the car to pull it out to do the Wow. Update. My, mine, like, we just recently got a new car and it's an SD card slot. 
They're like, yeah, when you when you come back and you want to update any of this, we'll just put a new SD card in it. And my, that's what mine is. But I, I have an aftermarket one from Pioneer, and it involves me because my head unit is now too old for updates. <laughs> they're worth not mine because it's certainly fine at running the latest stuff, as <laughs> I've found via the internet. Um, and I'm not going to tell you where. Um, but I have a Pioneer AVIC head unit, and I found ways to run the latest software, and I found the latest maps. So I now have the latest maps in my car. It took me like an hour to put it all together. I, the, the whole thing of putting your plugging your phone in your car, and there's also rumors that, that all the, that display stuff will come over Wi-Fi at some point. But the idea of plugging your phone in, having all of your music, and Spotify was a launch day partner, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the podcast app is a launch day thing, which is, again, pretty awesome because they're thinking about people like me who listen to podcasts in their car all the time. Um, and a lot of app developers like Marco Arment, who's coming out with a podcast app, said, if it's easy to support, I'll do it. He's like, I don't see any reason not to. I spend a lot of time in my car listening to podcasts. I might as well make sure that it's supported. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think what you'll see, though, is details will start to trickle out as to how to actually develop for airplay or not airplay carplay mm -hmm. um, i'd love to see somebody like a kenwood a clarion or a pioneer or rockford fosgate i'm just starting to name car audio companies now anybody that makes a gps head unit i would love to see somebody like that build that pioneer already has it kind of sort of with app radio but i would love to see that from a third-party manufacturer Awesome. Also, awesome. if you're jailbreaking your phone, don't upgrade to 7.1 because it breaks it. And, <laughs> and Apple gave full credit to the Evaders team in the security uh, bulletin as part of the iOS 7.1 update. Really? Yep. Like, thanks for letting us know about the flaw? Yep. Good on that. I mean, that makes sense, Apple's right? They've done that in the past. Yeah. They've done that in the past. When they fix the hole, they go, thanks to the Evaders team for helping us find this exploit. Patched. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they they know, and the guys that the, the the guys who build a lot of these jailbreak exploits are actual security people, and they they're utilizing the exploit. And a lot of times, when they utilize the exploit, sometimes they'll they won't. I mean, they report them mm -hmm. later, <laughs> but they they take advantage of the exploits while they have them, and that's why they're very good at it. Um, but a lot of the old hardware ones are getting much much harder to get. Um, early on in the iPhone when you were jailbreaking, it was pretty easy to get the hardware ones where Apple couldn't patch them, and now it's all software-based, and so Apple can patch them later, so jailbreaks will break when you update. Before, it was like, we found the hardware one by Apple, and you could update it at your leisure, and not, nothing would matter. The only thing I've cared about, and I haven't seen it since I updated yesterday, it's not respring. It's not re And they, they said that that was to be fixed. I haven't seen that since I haven't beta seen four. it yet, so uh, it's kind of ridiculous. It took them this long to fix that. What the hell? Um, well, I think they had some other things to do. Some like bigger CarPlay. issues, like they had CarPlay. I mean, Touch ID. If and, and sorry, I don't know if you 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 have five S. Yeah. Touch ID works for me like I don't know one out of eight times. Really? See, I, it works for me all every time. Not know, every time. To... Sometimes I'm like, oh, my finger, I got something on my fingers. It's not going to work right away. Or it, 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 it cuts yeah. out one time and I'll just go ahead or, or you know, something, some other situation. I, I haven't noticed. Um, but I'll, I'll, think... I'll make sure to, like, not give up on it as quickly and see if it works more often. I think it's, I think it's for me, it's, I just get really impatient. I'm like, all right, I've tried twice. I'm done. Swipe. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of my thing. Yeah, twice and then. Go ahead and key it in. See, I would definitely okay. notice because I've I've now since because I had such good luck with it, mm -hmm. I now have like an a, a ten character alphanumeric. Oh, <laughs> You're really been on it, aren't you? <laughs> so like, if it doesn't work, I get really like I would get really pissed off. Mm -hmm. But now I will say that after I can't remember who was talking about it, the guy that runs I more, um, guy Richie. Maybe it was guy. It was a guy Richie or. Ianaco, or no, Renny Ritchie. It's Guy English or Renny Ritchie, probably. Or who's the Ianaco guy? Andy Ianaco. Oh, Andy Ianaco. It was one of them talking about it, and they were like, "If you just hurried up through your fingerprint scan, go back in there, and actually 
scan and when it says to move your finger around move mm-hmm. your finger around mm-hmm. i've mm-hmm. done that like i remember the first time i did it i was like i was taking my phone hold on let me get my phone out. i was taking my phone and i'm i'm going like this and then like this and then like this and i'm i'm do- making the phone do like somersaults as i'm trying to but do i think it. the point is that it gets more area of your thumb was what they're getting at because they're like right. keep doing it when it says you know when it says are you okay no keep doing it you know keep keep doing because i'm more guessing if, if, you, more if, areas. if 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 you if you just spin it around in your hand, you're still getting the same, the same area. area of the yeah. print. Because the whole point is, it's getting you got to get the it's edges. getting the edge. So if you keep pressing the same point, it's going to get the right. same edge. And every time it said every time it does that, it takes like a hash of your finger. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which, if you read how that works, it's intense and oh, insane. Yeah. <laughs> like it put it, there's something about when you power on the device, the device, the chip in the reader then encrypts the enclave in it on like some memory spot on the phone. And then the only, wow. and like the, when the, when you push your fingerprint in and I'm sure, and AJ, you may know this better than I do. If you read the white paper, when you put your fingerprint in, it communicates with that secured area on the device. And the, the, the answer back is a yes, no answer. There, there's it's some hash that's passed that, that means nothing other than to the exact fingerprint scanner that's on your device and the exact chip that's in your phone. So I can't imagine if you go into the Apple store and say, I busted the, the fingerprint scanner, they're going to be like, yeah, here's a whole new phone because <laughs> your fingerprint scanner is tied to... It's in there too tight. The, the An actual chip on the phone mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, can I'm I trying bring... to redo? I'm trying to redo my thumb, and it's like being a real pain right now. Let me get to the part where I put more in. Try using a different finger. Your fingerprint cannot be red. I am part of the Men in Black. <laughs> <laughs> did you burn off your awesome. fingerprints? So yeah, I did. I have not had much for glass news that wasn't people getting arrested lately. Um, so I, I, this, this is a little positive. I just heard about this today. Um, a really cool one uh, it called Preview. I just saw the demo of it. I haven't got to try this out yet. I just I just listened to it right before and then now it's not loading right. What's going on? Um, but this one uh, you, you load up Preview which I think just goes, you know, Google Glass Preview and it'll pull right up. I probably just activated it sitting over there. Um, but then if you look at a movie poster and I'll try to pull up the demo video here. Um, it will uh, uh, read the movie poster and pull the trailer from YouTube. Not a good demo. They didn't have any screencast on this thing. But um, and he shows it kind of like, I think it's coming off of a tablet. But then there's some demos of him actually going to a movie theater and, and checking that out. So some cool context sensitive things I, there's the video uh some cool context uh sensitive things uh that don't require a qr code for a change so so it's like almost like a google goggles but dedicated that's to, what it seems to, to do uh, like you know you i would imagine it's got it's pulling some database maybe it's probably hitting all this stuff off google because all that stuff is pretty upfront when you search for movies these days uh, so it's probably only going to work with like a very it's come it's imminent in the theaters or was just in the theaters uh, kind of situation. Um, so oh, that's that's a cool kind of context thing. And I don't know about sitting there watching a trailer in your class, but um, it's kind of I like it. I like it. Also, I've noticed no updates to Google Glass since because they're moving. They're moving to four four or KitKat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And is there generally a problem with battery indicators in Android? Um, I've had a problem with the glass. I'm having a horrible problem right now with the Nexus. My Nexus is accurate. My Galaxy camera. I don't think that it's that the battery indicator is off. I think that the battery, because it's a... It's a camera that also runs Android that's tied to a cellular network that mm-hmm. I think that my battery just dies fast because of what the device is. You can't get rid of my battery in my, <laughs> um, and then my Nexus. No, it's either charged, needs charging, and once in a while it'll actually give me a percentage. It's been pretty rough. Hmm. So, oh, You know what? I don't think, well, the Galaxy device I think shows a percentage. How do you turn on the Nexus to turn it on to a percentage? 
from uh, the default? Well, no, when you pull down the uh, menu, the thing, it'll show you. But it doesn't even show, like, it, it, it either shows it's charged or there's, like, the exclamation mm -hmm. and it says connect the charger, but it'll run for, like, hours. Oh, yeah. I have not had that problem. It's been a little weird. I'm told I need to reinstall it. Re I'll give it to, I'll give Google this. Hmm. Reinstalling is not bad because since you're, once you log into Google Play, it's going to actually come back and say, do you want to download all the apps that were already on this device? Yeah, uh, but my worry was, and I, I, I think I voiced this last week, I don't want to lose my save game. So. Use... Uh, figure it out. Called. Figure it out. And it's I, actually, I would love, of course, it's I would actually love working to switch out. To, I would love to jump over to Android for a little bit with a Nexus 5 because I can now because I'm on at and Yay. Uh, but I, I can't. Have you guys ever tried switching from? I've tried. I tried so many times. No, I still, have you tried switching from iOS to Android? I have not. Like now since iMessage is out? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. It. You can't do it. If your family's on it, you're done. You're done. Yeah. You're you're not leaving iOS. One, it's like right. the 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 app, and I'm not saying that there that you can't find comparable apps for certain things. Oh, it's not that. It's that. So here's here's what happened. This is real life. What happened? This happened to me for a little bit. It happened to my brother a whole lot more. So, uh, what happened to me? I have my iPhone. Love my iPhone. Decided, haha, let's have some funny fun times. Let's got let's go with Windows Phone for a little bit. So yeah. I had a Windows Phone Lumia 822 last summer. Um and it was like fine. The problem was that like I wouldn't get text messages from my wife or anybody who had an Apple device. Because iMessage, when you have it, you have to go find every device that has iMessage turned on for your phone number and shut them off and then don't get any text messages for like three you know days. you know this happened uh my dad's 3gs actually went and uh and he got on the other phone and it wouldn't connect any text messages it kept looking for the iMessage. can you right you, there's a portal you can use at apple to fix that now and i don't yeah that's not a that's not a general fix for mm. anybody no but you if you call know. apple support that's what I was saying. That's where they send you. That's a weird right. issue. <laughs> All right. There's a yeah, deactivating iMessage. So there's acknowledge based document. You can't receive SMS on your non Apple device when another person sends them using an iPhone. You can't send SMS to a non Apple device because they send us an iMessage. Tap settings, turn iMessage off. If you can't deactivate iMessage, call Apple. I'm sure Apple sends you to said portal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I would I would love to do it, but I so my wife reminded me of the the four things that I love about iOS devices, and this is why when people go iCloud stinks and Apple sucks at services, th my wife kindly reminds me of the four reasons I can't or three reasons I can't leave an iPhone. One, iMessage. Plain and simple, I can text message from anywhere. I have it on my laptop. I have it on my iPhone. I have it. I used to have it on my Hackintosh. I need to fix that. I don't know why it's broken again. Um, I have it on. Um, I have it on my on my. Uh, so there's that's number one. Number two, photo stream. So I get pictures of my kid via Wi-Fi for free automatically. Don't even have to think about it. Number three, iCloud backup. I pay for iCloud backup. I am that guy. <laughs> here's why my wife and i each have a 32 gig iphone my wife has the number of pictures you take of your child very early <laughs> on in their life is astounding see i just redid it and i had to type in my passcode again nonsense um i have you have the wrong fingers I do. <laughs> Stupid damn fingers. Uh, my backup of my phone, I think, is like four and a half gigs. Oh, I'm sorry, 7.4 gigs. My wife's backup is 10.2 gigs. Wow. I have to. <coughs> but the fact that it's automatic overnight, I don't have to think about it. it mm -hmm. As soon as, if I'm on Wi Fi and I'm plugged in, it's backing up. Yep. And it backs up my entire photo roll which is the key thing. I could give a crap about my app data. Could really give a crap about my app data. As long as my pictures are backed up, I'm a happy, happy man. And Are you, uh, are you offloading those anywhere? Like, are you, uh, they're just like live in iCloud and that's it? Yep. 
What do you my do? Wife, what do my, you do when you run out of room on your phone to for all those to download back onto? Why, why do you think I have a 32 gig iPhone? <laughs> That's exactly why I have. You're gonna I meet that it. sometime. See, and I was. Upset. I mean, I just had a I, I, similar situation. The, the person I was helping, uh, one didn't know that they were already paying for iCloud backup, <laughs> so they had like a 15 or 25 gig, something like that. Um, and never still took 10 the, gigs. Still never 10 took. Gigs you still have 10 gigs, but she <laughs> had run out of room. And it was like, how do I get the pictures off here? So I showed you, like, you pull up iPhone, you pull them off. Half of them are coming to iCloud, right. but you got to delete them off your phone using this, this, and this. Um, That's my problem. There's no, like, this is one of those things that Apple has made iOS very, very simple. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that they've made it too simple sometimes. <laughs> um, and this is one of them. I would love nothing more than to pay for some sort of service that allows me to auto back up my pictures. Dropbox, Google Drive. Google, now, here's my problem with Dropbox. They got rid of their cheap plan. I don't need 100 gigs. I need 20 gigs. Yeah. Yeah. And they, 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 so you either get their like baseline two. I have five because of like various, like I've referred people and stuff. invites. Yeah. And invites and stuff. Five. SkyDrive or does you it get now. 100. But does SkyDrive do a picture backup? Yeah. They, they just implemented, I think, in their, I think OneDrive now. OneDrive. Yeah. At least I know they did it on the Android side, and I think that it was also, Ooh, and that's where you could get like drive. twenty gig, you get twenty twenty gig or something. Twenty five, yeah. twenty five. I know that because mm-hmm. I have it, and I was using that. I was trying to use it for <clears throat> illegal television episode sharing for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work because their file upload sizes were too small. Um, the pictures would work. Yeah. I might do that. There you go. There you See, go. that's Thanks, what Sean. bummed me out when when the five S came out mm-hmm. because there were no sixty four gig devices in pittsburgh oh because i want to go to a 64 gonna, gig iphone so so aj like when that does start filling you're just going to get a bigger phone aren't you he's going to get the space pack did you see the space pack space pack uh wasn't this mophie space the mophie one yeah that yeah. we we were i we, would we out of this week. i wouldn't i don't think i would get a i don't think i'd get a bigger phone that's that's literally the whole reason we switched to att <laughs> so i could get an iphone for my wife that wasn't 650 dollars um but yeah, I we, we I I needed to get my wife a bigger phone because she literally was out of space and she was offloading, but she could only offload so much. And you start taking videos and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's, like this is where iOS gets too simple. I would love nothing more than to have a camera app or some sort of background syncing app to take all my pictures, mm-hmm. shove them up to the cloud, and then delete them off my phone, or leave me like the last. Yeah, so basically, yeah. I want reverse photo stream. See, my problem is, and the thing is, um, I, I revert, I divert to the Apple things because, um, I, I, sorry, I just got a message. Um, I, I, I divert to those because I go with like, like you know, people have picked up Windows machines, and I got to do what now? I got to do what now? It's like, like, I don't like the learning curve because some people don't need a machine with a learning curve. You know, what I mean, no they need a machine with a learning. Curve. Yeah, nobody does. But 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 to be able to like it's just heartbreaking to tell somebody that is not computer proficient. OK, you got to do this. You got to do this. And by the way, everybody on the Internet is out to get you. You know, versus. Yeah. And I know it's like general, like the education, but it's never going to get that point. It's going to be more more people that don't know to use it. Like, I feel bad when somebody that tend to be doctors show me an Android phone and say, well, I spent so much for this. I better have such and such. And they haven't even set up their Play Store yet, which was a situation recently. It was just like, it's, and I feel like Android's at that point. It's like, well, now you need antivirus for this. It's like, what? You know, I don't know if you need an, as long as you, what was it? 0.1% of Android apps last year. That yeah. Came from the yeah. Play Store. As long as you're not, Store, as long as you yeah. don't check the checkbox that says trust, untrusted stores which how many people know to go look for something right. like that I don't, and, that, I don't and that's the thing I, I think is most the people... android store considered is the amazon store considered untrusted yes yes but then on a, on a g on a g i'm gonna mess this up google me start with gms phone you have to load the amazon store you have to Side check the checkbox right? hmm. you just check the checkbox and go to their site in a browser and it downloads the apk and then it'll let you run it yeah Right, so to, to get the app of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, another podcast on the lovely Sorgatron Media Network, 
you have to untrust you have to trust untrusted places yes but then you trust Amazon, but then you're open to trust untrusted places otherwise, which is, which is kind of like Amazon just opens all these people up to potential problems. Right, but Amazon doesn't care about that. No, no. But as long as you're getting all your stuff from Amazon, care. then you're good. You should be good if you trust Amazon yeah. as, a, yeah. as an aggregator. And they seem like they might be a little tighter than the uh, Play Store might be sometimes. So, uh, Chilla, I want to get to some things. we got to get out of here. We're running late because of technical problems before. Uh, you got a battery for me. I did get a battery for you. Oh, I didn't get it for you. Happy you, you birthday to, to me. You, Thanks a lot, Chilla. You have to purchase it. You can still borrow all mine. Awesome. If you, if you don't <laughs> we were talking about that. How, are we, how am I going to last? There's Wi-Fi. How am I going to last four days at a campsite? And I think you're going to supply me. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely hook you up. I just thought this one was cool because it was 100 bucks, 50% off with $10 instant code. So you're getting it for 40 bucks. And what is this? So this is the Anchor 2nd Gen Astro 12,000 milliamp external battery charger. That's a long name. Yeah. But it, the, what I thought was cool about this is there's three USB ports on it. Okay. So you can simultaneously Ooh. charge three devices, which you don't you usually see this. best friend at a conference. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If, if this would have been out, I wouldn't have three of... The devices that I have, the one with the like, had the Wi-Fi. Well, I have that. I would still everything. probably bought that one, but that was I would, crazy. The, like, I have like three of the same charge pack, mm -hmm. so I can simultaneously charge three devices. This will charge um, an iPhone six times. Wow! So it's only fifty bucks on yeah. Amazon, and it says um, and large capacity phones like the Galaxy S4 almost four times. Guys, in the picture, there is an iPad plugged into this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. you know how hard it is to find an outlet, a USB outlet that will like actually charge an iPad sometimes. With the trick, yeah, you're gonna get that 2.1 amp. Yeah, I got a couple of those. I actually bought a second. Remember that Belkin three outlet and mm -hmm. two USBs? I actually bought another one of those. I still bought the lower one, so it's not iPad compatible. Although, if you leave it charged, if you leave it plugged in, eventually it'll charge. It'll you, never you say it's to... charging, but if you just leave it alone, leave it off, it will charge. You have to charge. leave the screen off. You have to leave the screen off. So, it, so when it's powering the screen, it says, meh. <laughs> yeah. Right. And this, this, if you read the fine print, um, da, 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 da. input, output, I don't know if I don't know if all three of the USB ports are power rated the same, but um, two additional ports to charge full speed. I think there's an accelerated port on it, but anyway. So this was a pretty nice device. Cool. Um, and that's uh, ten dollars off. With is this is this uh, with this code at the Amazon store? That's what they're saying. So ten dollar code with a Astro thirty two G to do that. Yes. Awesome. There's another device out there that I found that's approximately the same price mm -hmm. without the ten dollars off. It's fifty bucks. Marked down from I think hundred and twenty. Nice. It was a, a revive mm -hmm. and it'll do like four times. Like it would recharge a phone four times, I think it was. But it also has a solar panel. So it said like I think like eight hours in the sun and it'll recharge the device. So you were talking about being that's what I need for camping. You right were there. talking about not being around power yeah at all exactly so i was trying to find something like this that you could I mean recharging your phone six times mm -hmm. to me is that could get you through a weekend that could get you definitely Probably. through a weekend um or if you had a d device that would recharge at like three or four but then was solar powered uh real quick i want to touch on google drive had an update uh add-ons is a little front and center i guess they've had these for a little bit but they haven't really um really put them up front i think yet it really kind of go search for them and i think most didn't know they existed uh pretty easy actually here's our uh, awesome cast doc here and if you have an add-ons at the top and you'll probably say it have a little red new if you haven't touched it yet um and i have a couple things i i just loaded i'm going to try out later there's a hello sign which you can sign your signature from email attachments just, but uh, i we have certain hr services that do that right now i think these DocuSign? Yeah, that's what we use. It looks like it's a pay service, though. Like, they give you three documents to do, and then you have to start paying for it. So I don't, I'm going to look at that. There's also a uh, connection to send a document out through MailChimp. Uh, so I'm going to be looking at that as well. I think it'd be kind of fun to be able to make a, a something in, in Docs, and then just, that's your newsletter. If, if hey, that's track what you're good changes. At. Or, that's pretty nice. Well, track changes has always been kind of in there. 
There's a there's an add-on now. There's an add-on that maybe it's probably better. There's stuff like charts. There's other uh, there's your track changes. There's an Avery uh, label merge. There you go. Um, table of content stuff like like stuff to uh, there's a fax app. Oh, Gliffy, which allows you to draw things. I wonder if it allows you to view Visio documents because that would be amazing. So a little bit of everything. There's one that like you actually can uh, share in. This one social drop, so you can actually share in tweets into a document. Um, so a lot of fun stuff. Start poking around there if you kind of live in Google Docs or have been thinking about it. Um, you know, a lot of stuff to, to help hook up, hook you up there. There's Uber Conference, which I've seen is being featured currently on uh, Google Hangouts, actually. So that might be something to look into, too. So um, excellent. Anything upcoming, Chilla? I don't have anything. There's TEDx Grandview tickets TEDx just Grandview went on sale. sale. TEDxGrandviewAv.com if you're in the Pittsburgh area. It's like 40 bucks for the ticket. I think it's 55 with the after party uh, included. So go check that out. Awesome. Um, AJ, what's going on with you? Vero Madness, that's Thursday, March 20th. You should be there if you're in the Carolinas. If you're not in the Carolinas, you should come anyways because um, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Um, we're going to have a lot of really cool things. Um, check me out uh, today. I just recorded for the Cisco Champions podcast, uh, episode six. Nice. Where we talk about Cisco UCS, so I'll be on there. If you go find that on the internet, I, I don't have a link to it. It's on TalkShoe. Uh, Sorg, you might remember TalkShoe. Uh, all my podcasts are still currently on TalkShoe, actually. <laughs> hey! If it ain't broke, what the hell, you. right? Right. Um, that's why it's so easy for me to start new podcasts because it just means start a YouTube account, start a talk show account. Let's go. Right. Ta-da. The, the, the basis of podcasting. Yep. Um, yeah, we, we got some, I got some fun, cool stuff coming up. I get to work with some all flash arrays coming up. So, uh, that'll, that'll be really fun. I have an SSD now in my desktop and, uh, oh God bless. It's fast. <laughs> If you've, if you've never had an SSD in something, like a, by the way, SSD stands for solid state drive. If you've never had a solid state drive in a computer before, and then you have one, you never want a spinning disk ever. I kind of want to toss one in my Mac Mini. There, there's I a have, lot on sale now. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Samsung Evo 840, you can get a 750 gig for 350 bucks right now on Amazon. Um, yeah, they're making them real cheap now. Nice. <laughs> I have a Crucial M4 that's on my desktop. So I went from, it used to take me a minute and a half to boot up to now 11 seconds. It is an order of magnitude lower. <laughs> <laughs> so You can get a Fusion I.O. card for like 30 grand. Uh, yeah, they, they make uh, Fusion I.O. cards for the Cisco UCS blades. It's a mezzanine card. It goes in the back. And then uh, These are PC, yeah, really cool I Express. I would love to do Fusion IO on my desktop, but that's thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, it's the, but it's two terabytes. Yes, and for, <laughs> t and for less than thirty thousand dollars, I can get two terabytes of flash storage. Probably for less than a thousand, I could do that. Where was that thing? Hold on, I need to. Uh, sort <laughs> anyway, so anyway, Chilla, Chili's at Chilla on Twitter. Anything you want to plug? Anything coming up? Uh, anything going I, don't, on? I don't think so. Awesome. I'll be back here next week. Um, I am appearing. Already recorded. Will appear tomorrow. Uh, when, this Wednesday. Uh, they're going to be having me on Podcast Verite with our friends from the Audio Shocker. They were on here a few weeks ago in February. Um, go check it out, audioshocker.com, and look for that. It's actually the last episode. They're actually closing their doors in April. Oh, Yeah, yeah. Way to sad. close the door, Sorg. I, so apparently I'm the killer of podcasts. So, um, so destroyer of worlds. <laughs> alternately, our friends in the mainstream media, uh, Matt and Jen Carlins, had me on their new uh, show, uh, the Disney on ice after show today on Google hangout, I got randomly invited into. So <laughs> that's something you can look up as well. Um, so, so there's that. Um, I, by the way, did not see Disney on ice. So I was a spectator asking questions as far as that goes. So that was fun. Uh, aside from that, of course you can find us here at awesomecast.com. We got a link there every week. So you can join us live in the chat room on the video stream when it works. Cause apparently that was a problem tonight. Um, as you know, with the technical difficulties at the beginning of the show, um, 
and uh, you can also check us out uh, again go to awesomecast.com click on the links for Amazon things including like the battery we talked about here during the show anything else helps us helps support us as far as that goes um, Twitter at awesomecast awesomecast uh, on uh, Facebook and Google Plus. Awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com is the email address. Check us out on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, and YouTube, and Spreaker as well. Um, and of course, check out everything else going on at sorgatronmedia.com. Every, all the shows we're putting together, all the other work we're doing, uh, DVDs, um, other projects. Let us know uh, if uh, we can help you out with your multimedia stuff. And uh, with that, thanks to our awesome chat room sticking with us through the technical difficulties. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. to manage an entire exchange environment but there's like times where it'll go down for a couple hours and the discussions will come up because we do like exchange migrations and exchange builds and that sort of stuff and the times there's times where it comes up and we're like how hard would it really be to bring exchange back because <laughs> this is ridiculous and then we're like we're not bringing it back we got rid of it in the first place because nobody wanted to deal with exchange hey guy who does exchange builds all day do you want to create accounts for users no. Can I can I drop all that in? Apparently, I've been.